food so that we can continue to live so that we can fulfill our lives. God also put into the world a system of providing for the world, a system of changes that brings about sustenance for every creature. And God created systems of movements and motions that bring about different changes in the skies and that these things have an influence upon our world. We know that when there's sunlight, enough sunlight, and we have crops, too much sunlight, no clouds, they get scorched. Too little sunlight, they don't grow. So the sunlight is needed for the growth of your crops. You also need to have other spiritual factors come into a good health and to cause different things to grow and to prosper. We know certain things grow only at night. And so the influence of the moon and the stars are seen that way. And so people looked at this and said, well, just as God put a system within the man that the king of the man is the heart, it was within the heart they saw the seat of the human emotion and the, the seat of understanding. Just as there is an independent heart within the person, there seems to be independent bodies within the world that control the world. And therefore, we should show them some deference because God has made them independent. And this is tantamount to idolatry, but only Moses. You see, it says that Moses went into the fog and into the cloud, into the midst of the cloud. What's the big deal? Why does... What's so special about going into a midst? That God made a pathway through the midst so that Moses would be able to enter on the mountain. Why is God found in a cloud altogether for? How can a cloud cover up God? God isn't physical. The answer is the fog is the fog of the mind. Our minds are foggy. What does it mean that they're foggy? They don't see how we get created. We think of ourselves as existing always, even though we know we came from our parents. We feel, however, we've always been around here. We don't anticipate our deaths, even though we know we're going to die. We feel as if we're here permanently. We have a sense of presence that defies any kind of origin or looking for origins. And that's what's meant by a fog. We don't see how things happened initially. We don't think, see how things continue to happen and will happen. We don't see the relationship between the forces that God unleashed into this world and God and ourselves. Moses was able to enter into that fog. He was able to see clearly. And he saw how everything comes from God and that everything is an instrument of God. But only Moses saw that. We believe that because Moses saw that. And so, the people rationalize that Moses is no longer around. We go back to the way we see things. We can't live on, on a level that's beyond ourselves. But you can argue how still fairy tales. How can you go ahead and say that the sun and the moon are independent? You see that God is in control. God was manifest. So there's another layer to this. <coughs> We are supposed to honor our parents. Why do we honor parents? What do our parents do for us that God did not do? Why should God defer to them at all? The answer is because our parents had freedom of choice. They had freedom of choice whether to have us or not. And so we honor them because they, together with God, made us. And we show deference to those who gave us life. And so, just as we're supposed to honor parents because they had freedom of choice, one could argue that there exist spiritual entities that have freedom of choice. They're able to start a process, just as parents are able to have a process of creating a baby, just as an individual can choose his path in life, so too an angel can choose what to do, what is correct and what is not correct. So too can a celestial being possibly have choices that they make which bring certain things and certain changes into effect 
with the blessing and concurrence of God. This is called shituf or partnership. Maybe they really weren't worshipping the idols as independent contractors. They got their independent uh, powers. But maybe they just looked at the idols as partners with God. Maybe the sun was God's partner in bringing blessing on the earth. Maybe it was the angel Michael. Maybe it was the angel Gabriel. But surely God has no problems with sharing honor as God shares honor with parents. One can argue that. But if you come to an understanding of how the world was created, you understand that God is infinite and that everything is created by the Creator on a continuous basis. And therefore, nothing really has, except for man, independent will or choice. Because all creatures, except for man, are like instruments in the hand of the user. The sun and the moon and even the angels are the axe that God uses to chop down the tree of the world, the tree of evil. And so, to say that God has got partners is also something that's hard to accept and understand. And so here we come to a third level, which is called channeling. They did not really worship idols. They really worshipped God. What were they worshipping a golden calf for? Well, they saw the angels of God. The angels of God have four faces, according to Ezekiel, chapter 1. To the right, there is the face of the lion. To the left is the face of the ox. To the front, the face of a man. To the back, the face of an eagle. And each of these sides are full-fledged parts of the angel and depending upon the direction the angel wishes to take that's the direction of the particular animal or the particular face that the angel follows each of the four faces of these angels these hayot are channels of the divine influence because an angel is not an independent contractor or a partner with God the angel is a channel for God's benevolence. And so the face of the ox was the channel for parnosa, for livelihood, and for physical material success. And so they thought that by creating the image of the part of the angel, the face of the ox, they were channeling God's energy of blessings for the material. And that's why they said, these are your gods of Israel. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is, is that they were limiting God. If you think that God can only give you your livelihood by certain designs, you're limiting what God can do for you. Yes, God channels energies through the face of the ox. And the face of the ox is the power and the conduit for giving blessings to all of the creatures upon earth. Granted. But can God give you blessings and livelihood without the face of the ox, of course? And so therefore, any kind of representation of any kind of channeling actually limits God. Because God is unlimited. And our relationship is not with an aspect of God, not with an aspect of an angel, not even with some sphere in the higher echelons. Our channel is directed to God himself. And that's why the golden calf was wrong. Because God said, I am none of those things. I am not the face of the ox or the face of the lion or the face of the man. It's not even a minuscule representation of myself. It is merely the way I wish to have certain things manifest, but I'm never limited by them, and therefore I should not be represented by them.